plots within plots within plots. Now, the biggest Dune buffs among you probably know the real quote from the book is, plans within plans within plans. But today, we wanted to talk about plots. Specifically, plots within plots. Layered plots. Subtext. You're getting the gist. Because to talk about Dune, you have to start with its many layers. Dune is actually a very deceptive book. It's a book that says the opposite of what it appears to on the surface. Because on the surface, it appears to be the apotheosis of the competent man trope we encountered in the golden age of science fiction. The entire book is about human capacity honed to its finest edge. But in Dune, Herbert actually shows us the trap that type of self-confidence and self-reliance can bring. And he gives us clues to this constantly. Because in this book, throughout this book, all the characters are wrong. Let's go down the list. The Bene Gesserit are wrong about their ability to control their breeding program. The Mentat Thufir Howitt is wrong about Jessica. Jessica is wrong about Yue. Leto is wrong about his ability to survive Dune. The Emperor is wrong about his plot with the Harkonnen. Baron Harkonnen and Piter Devaris are wrong about the consequences of their plot. Fade Rautha is wrong about his ability to operate without his uncle. And ultimately, Paul is wrong about his capacity to avoid his terrible purpose. In doing this, in most cases, Herbert is giving us a deconstruction. He's taking very reductivist aspects of human personality that people often use to define themselves, you know, like when people say, I'm a logical person, or I'm very empathic, and showing us the arrogance in assuming that as a human being, we can truly perfect any of those traits or find perfection by focusing on one of them to the exclusion of the others. A highly logical human being who doesn't care about being empathic is destructive to themselves and those around them. As is an empathic person who refuses to utilize logic or consider rational realities when trying to help those they empathize with. This is perhaps exemplified in the way that the traitor Yue, often portrayed as the weakest and most imperfect of the characters, gets the better of everyone. Especially the emotive master, the Bene Gesserit Jessica, and the pinnacle of logic, the Mentat Thufir Howitt. Yue manipulates Jessica by knowing that she values her emotional perception so highly. He knows that she will read his emotions, but that itself is her weakness. Yue sets her up to think any strange emotion of his that she may read is simply the result of his embarrassment over treating her informally in a moment of exhaustion, so she doesn't see his treachery. There's also a moment where he's on the verge of breaking, of telling her everything, and she doesn't see it. As the book says, then Jessica spoke, shattering the moment. If she had read that moment correctly, the entire course of the book might have been different. The fall of Atreides might have been averted. To hammer this home, Herbert tells us shortly after that she herself felt Yue was holding something back from her, but out of pity and kindness, she didn't force it out of him. On the other side, there's Thufir Howitt. He's a mentat, part of the school of humanity that has refined their logic to supercomputing levels. And he, too, doesn't see the fact that Yue is the traitor, but for completely different reasons. He never questions the assumptions he bases his logic on. He knows that Yue has undergone Sook School Conditioning, a type of mental conditioning for doctors that's supposed to ensure they don't harm their patients. He assumes that this conditioning is unbreakable and builds all of his reasoning off that. But as we know, this is false. And if you build all your logic off a faulty premise, all that logic you've trained yourself for is worse than useless. But since it's logically consistent, if you're a person who favors logic, it's easy to convince yourself it's true. This examining of premises is perhaps one of the biggest lessons Herbert tries to impart with this book. One of his greatest observations is that sometimes people who consider themselves highly logical don't have the self-awareness to, or just don't, practice the pinnacle of logical skill, the constant questioning and re-examining of their own premises. And he uses this over and over again to set up the plot. Almost all of the disasters in the book, especially the ones that result from Mentat miscalculation, like Piter working off the assumption that most of Dune is uninhabitable and there are far fewer Fremen than there are, comes from a failure to re-examine the basic assumptions a complex logical argument is based on. So whether it's showing an entire order based around understanding human emotion have their millennium-long plan thrown into disarray because someone chooses love over loyalty to that order, 
or having the planetologist, who planned to use religion help him achieve his environmental goals, die alone in the desert he was trying to change because he started to believe in the very religion he was trying to use, or having human supercomputers miss the obvious because they don't take a step back and re-examine their premises. Herbert was intent on using his characters not to show how awesome it would be to have superpowers, but the flaws in believing that any one aspect of who we are, no matter how refined, can actually make us superhuman. Showing that very refinement may blind us. This, though, is just the first of three warnings Dune is built around. So join us next time as we begin to explore the most superhuman and, spoiler alert, eventually the literal blindest character of all of them, Paul Atreides, as we explore the second warning Herbert offers. Because like in myths of old, the power of prophecy here isn't a blessing, but a curse.